Live from Dublin, Ireland, it's The Cube. Covering Hadoop Summit Europe 2016. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Dublin, Ireland for Hadoop Summit 2016 in Europe. It's The Cube, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Alan Gates, co-founder of Hortonworks. ODPI steering committee, giving us the update on what's going on in the open data uh, world. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much. First, congratulations. Horton, Horton we're doing well, you guys went public. Company's growing, market's changing. Yes. A lot of partnering going on. A lot, a lot of community of action. Yep, a lot of changes, a lot of growth. It's been very good, it's been a great year for us. One of the things we were talking about yesterday, pretty hardcore, was community. community right now is more important than ever yep. in this ecosystem because of all the changes. It's not just Hadoop anymore, that's one element of the overall Hadoop ecosystem which is now just a label for the big data ecosystem right. of technologies. A lot of new technologies coming in, new projects starting, a lot of big vendors with installed base and big money right. participating. Cloud on top of that provides more power. Yes. <laughs> it's like Star Trek, Scotty, more horsepower. So <laughs> we got that going on right now, it's a good thing. Right. How does that affect what's going on in the community and ODPI, what's the update? So, ODPI, the, really what we saw is, well, well let me kind of back up and say where do we think our value is and what do we see the need here, right? As you said, there's a lot of power in Hadoop. There's a lot of different things you can do with it, it's a platform, but how, how are people going to use that? And as Hortonworks, we talk to our users, some of the other partners in ODPI as they talk to them, one of the things they realized is this thing, it can be used in so many different ways that it's actually hard to build on top of it. If you're an application provider and you want to build uh, an application to sell to people, you get it to work in one environment, you take it to a different distribution, doesn't work at all. And it becomes a test nightmare for them and a, a support nightmare, right? So one of the things that we wanted to address in ODPI is how do we, how do we bring specifications and best practices and testing to this ecosystem so that these users can, or sorry, these application writers can write it once, test it somewhere, and have confidence it's going to work everywhere. Because what do we want, what does Hortonworks want, what do the other distribution providers want? We want Hadoop to accelerate, we want it to be adopted, and we want it to be successful. The more we can make it easy for application providers for that next layer up to write on top of it, the better it is for all of us. And this is the focus we've been hearing about automation, the assembly stuff, this yep. effort to reduce complexities for not only just implementing interoperability is huge, yeah. and dealing with other open APIs, kind of a unification message. You see, that, is that something that's happening? I think that's true. I think it's, uh, yeah, how do we make this so that it's just bonehead simple, and it'll never quite be bonehead simple, but uh, <laughs> but a good compared to where it is now, it can yeah. be bonehead simple to make this stuff go, right? So we, we were talking at our, our open, it's kind of what the, what the cloud guys, the public cloud guys are trying to do, make it bonehead simple, but they're not as robust as right. what's coming, you know, but they get there and you know, things are moving fast. We were making a comparison to the early Unix days, where there was tons of fragmentation. I'm sure you hear this a lot, but yes. where does, where, do those, where does that metaphor sort of line up and where does it break down in your opinion? Um, I don't know, I haven't Sorry, thought Unix about Linux. it. Sorry, Unix, okay, so let me, let no, me carry it. No, I think it's so basically saying you know, HP, IBM, no, you know, no, blah, blah, blah. I, I remember those in, days, in, I am, in I am right. old enough that's to why, remember right. that. Know, that's why old. we figure, okay. <laughs> but, but, no, you know, I just had to think about it for a enough, second. So, so okay, so now, then, and then Linux comes in. We're sort of saying, well, that's kind of what ODPI is. is Except that sort Linux of sort of did it differently, right? Linux came in and just crushed those, right? It's not that it standardized it, it just made them irrelevant. And I don't think that's what ODPI is going to do at all. I think what it's going to do is say, here's the way to, to set these things up so that everybody can use them. Because right. if you look at our specification, it isn't about have these features, do these things. It's about when you install it, don't screw with the directory structure. Yeah. When you set it up, make sure these environment variables are set so that as an application, I can find where you put things. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Don't change public APIs, which you would think would just, you know, people should know, but surprisingly, <laughs> they don't. Um, so it's a best practice. It, it is, a of it's a set of standards of how you would lay this stuff out and make it usable. So we're not trying to supersede yeah. anybody else or add new features, we're just trying to make it usable. That's where I would say the analogy breaks down. I think to a first approximation, right. it is a good analogy. 
Yeah, right, so that's okay. what we were getting. Let me, let me jump in because that's really helpful. We, no, I was that was my major in, in undergraduate operating systems, so I remember that vividly. But it's a it's, it's a metaphor to try to un framework around it. So I agree, it was not a pure metaphor. Transition. Right. It's just like Red Hat for Lin Hadoop is not a good metaphor for Hortonworks. Right. It can never be the same ever. Sure. But it was an operating system contained within hardware, mini computer or whatnot, and fragmented around. So the fragmentation is challenging. But the unification, that what, the, the thing about Linux at the time that we're comparing to was the solidarity around Linux. Yes. The community said, hey, let's, not, let's think about the bigger picture. The bigger picture is this fragmentation and these market forces. So if we stick together, we can go okay. provide an alternative and grow, and they crushed everyone and made everyone irrelevant, which is totally right. true. So now we live in an era of APIs. We live in an era of distributed operating system, if you will. Right. So in a way, it's kind of like just a metaphor, but if you take that API base, universal API, so you can get away with standards possibly, but the community coming together. I, I agree, the community has to come together around this for it to be successful, and I think in that sense you are right. It, this does has, have to be, you know, we start this out as, when we go to application providers and end users and pitch this, everybody says, I love that. You know, can you give me that yesterday, please? <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> and so, as as we start to prove out our value, and as application providers start to say, yeah, we want this, that's how we believe we can get, grow that community. But I, I agree you're right. So I right. wonder if I could just go one more follow-up. So okay. in, the, in the Linux world, there was and still is you know, multiple distros, one obviously major one. So there was some initial fragmentation. Is, is there, are there some similarities there as well? I, I think there will continue to be multiple distributions. I don't think, uh, at least, well, Okay, let me put it this way. I don't think ODPI is going to create a single distribution. That's not our goal. Mm -hmm. That's, I don't think there, we would have any way to have that happen. Um, and I would not be surprised to continue to see multiple distributions. Right, which again, in Linux today you have multiple distributions. Yeah, There's always is, room for right. two or three. I, so, I think it's appropriate, yeah. So let's get that, you mentioned everyone wants that yesterday. I love that line, because that's pretty much, mm. <laughs> go that's faster, software. pedal faster. You know, catch up, fall behind. So catch up and lead is really the industry's imperative. Right. Everyone kind of wants that, right? Come on, go faster. So what is that pitch that everyone says, I want that yesterday? And what's the updates? Where's the progress bar? What's been done? Can you just take sure. us through that real quick? So here's what we've done. We, we've we split our specifications into a couple tracks. So we have a runtime. Oh, first the pitch. First the pitch. Of okay, that everyone sorry, wants. the pitch, yes. What's the pitch of, what are we going to give? The pitch is kind of threefold. Like we're hitting three audiences, right? To the distribution providers, the pitch is, we can give you a set of tests that can prove that you meet what we're doing, right? That you get the little gold seal, you're approved. To the application providers, which is really who we're pitching to hard, um, you can write your application, uh, you can test it against the, our reference build, you can test it against one of the distributions that are certified, and it should run anywhere. You know, test once, deploy anywhere, just like Java or yeah. one of those, right? which to them is music to their ears. Yeah. Uh, to the end users, it's similar because they, they tend to be writing their own software, they may be doing their own internal things. They're, I think that's a market where we can maybe do better in the future. We kind of focused on the application providers first. Yeah, good, just for step one, yeah. Yeah, you got to start somewhere, right? Yeah. But I think that same pitch is going to work for them because everybody customizes this when they yeah, bring it in house, absolutely. right? Everybody writes their own software and they want the same thing. Good. They want it, the, because Honestly, you look at a lot of the big players, they have multiple different distributions. It's not like they just buy right. from us or just buy from Cloudera or whatever, they, they've got one of each. Yep. But two and three are really a developer play, whether they're an ISV or somebody yes, inside of Bank of America. It's, yeah. They want reliability, they want to be able to write their own apps, build it in, and then push a button, like a DevOps kind of agile way, yes. make it work, exactly. infrastructure as code, all that good stuff. Exactly, so okay, so where's the update on that? So we split into kind of, we split our efforts into runtime and operation. So runtime is Hadoop proper, HDFS, Yarn, MapReduce, just you know, core old style Hadoop. And with that we have released last month a specification of, okay, here's how you should lay this out. If you're a, a ODPI compliant distribution, here's the environment variables you should have set, here's best practices you should be following. Included in there are some best practices for ISVs, for app writers so that they can know that can form. We also released a set of tests so that the distributions can, can run these tests against their stuff and assert, yes, I, um, I am compliant. And we released a, uh, a build for that, a reference build so that people can use that to test with. 
that's out there, ready to download and use. The, the distribution providers that are part of ODPI are now running their tests against it and hope to, uh, we hope to see them release uh, compliant versions relatively quickly. And the outcome there is you'll see some gold stars and some certification, yep. exactly. you know, fully approved, Hadoop, blah, yep. blah, blah. Yep, okay. seal of approval. Got it, seal of approval, perfect. Um, and then App on the developers. operations side, which is focused on Embari and how you actually install this software, manage that, that's in a draft state. So we have a team working on writing up a spec for that with the plan that by this summer we'll also have specs and tests and all that for that. And that's where some of the friction came in in the marketplace was the, the, sure. the, the requisite for Ambari, right? Wasn't that the And you know, we addressed point? that. That was one of the friction points. It wasn't the only one, but it's okay. one. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> Herding <but> cats. <laughs> sure. But um, we did address that by just recognizing that, you know what, not all members are going to be compliant with the operation spec. Some are only going to be compliant with a runtime spec, and that's cool. Okay, if, so that's not a deal breaker then? No, it's not. We have members uh, already in there that have just flat out said, we don't care about Ambari, we don't use it. Um, we're, we're not going to comply with that. Spec. How much market forces are you guys looking at? I mean, how uh, aware are you guys? I'm sure you obviously, I'm saying you're not aware, but like, there's a lot of stuff going on from, that's vectoring in from the market. Uh, cost of ownership, complexity reduction, vendors own specific moves, for instance, I was just talking earlier about, you, know, you got Oracle running big data SQL now with Hortonworks and a huge deal no one's talking about, but you can actually run 12C with Hortonworks without right. Exadata. I mean, I mean that's a, that is a huge deal, because that's, you know, Oracle used to have a deal with Cloudera, right. and now you see the multi-vendor kind of playbook again. We've seen that movie in the 80s and 90s. So, you know, this is kind of what's happening now. So, that's a pretty big deal, small in comparison to, the ecosystem, but it's Oracle, it's got to install sure, base. it's important. I mean, these are the moves that are going on. How does that impact your role and your team and? Um, as part of ODPI. Yeah. So I, I think what it, it drives all more that the, the better job we can do of making these distributions low friction for people like Oracle, yeah. the easier we make their life, right? Because the, the reality for them is, and for all these kinds of players, is they need to work with all the major distributions. They all have customers that are yep. using all the distributions, and we recognize that and want to make that. And that's the whole effort of the whole ODPI. And the thing that you know, we, we saw, I saw it yesterday, I didn't have time to talk about it in the intro, Dave, was there's a huge undercurrent of data management push. Now, the data management market is like banging on this ecosystem, like we need more hardened, you know, relevant, real-time data management stuff right. now. Like right. yesterday, right? right. So, yeah, I love that line. And because that's, there's an installed base of data warehousing, there's an installed base of data management industries. So this is a big deal. How does all that weave into the mix? So that we haven't really addressed yet. I think that for us is kind of an unaddressed market and that is a good question of we need to figure out how we can make that metadata um, available to them as well. And, and all those, the things that, kind of go around that. And the reason I would say we haven't addressed that yet is we started out kind of with a, a simpler, easier vision just so we could get up and going, which was just to do core, just in Bari. So we really haven't gotten to a point yet where we're touching those things. Now, we want to bring other projects in, right? And a kind of our approach is let's bring in what we think has the biggest bang for the buck. Obvious, an obvious uh, candidate there is Hive, which I'm a little biased to because that's what I yeah. look after in most of my day job at Hortonworks. So, but you know, just up on the 80-20 rule, that's going to be an obvious thing to look at. As we start to bring that in, your question of, you know, these metadata managers, security systems, all those things become even more relevant because yeah. th that's going to interact a lot more heavily. And the security so I think that's work is interesting now. You guys are setting the table for that with the security stuff now. Right, but so I think that's a question we haven't answered yet, but we'll start to answer over the next yeah. six to 12 so months. So the, the, the concept basically is to have the energy source sticker. <laughs> it's okay, yes, it's exactly. compliant. But so, but, but you're flexible in terms of, like we talked about Embari, okay, I'm not going to follow that. So what is it, you're 75% compliant, 80%? No, no, that's why we split it up so you that? can say I'm, run, I'm compliant on so the runtime. So runtime compliant, but I'm not compliant on the off side. Exactly. Okay, that's, period. That's I mean, it's where a binary, we, yes. right? Okay. That's where we would go. Yeah, because otherwise 75% compliant. Yeah, yeah, right, right. That's okay. like when a software engineer tells you he's 75% done with his yeah, code. Right. Like, that uh, just means nothing, uh, right? <laughs> 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 it means you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, good. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the, that's very much the goal. And as we bring in things like Hive, we'll probably put that in the runtime pile, right? Because that will make sense. Okay, great. So, um, 
So from summarizing, how's it going? I mean, what's the reaction from both sort of the developer community and, and the developers within the customers? And um, so all the customers we've talked about have been very excited about it. Um, one thing we feel like we need is to start to get even stronger feedback from the, um, the application developer community, because so far, I mean, this was started by Hortonworks, Pivotal, um, some of those kind of, you know, IBM. IBM's in there, right? Um, or big early, we're all the distribution providers. We know what we want to do with Hadoop, right? So <laughs> a big area of focus for us is to get, and we, we do have some application providers, SaaS and some uh, data torrents and guys like that that are giving us good feedback, but I think the big, the next thing for us is to really start to grow that part of the community because that's where we really need the feedback. We need those people telling us, you're making us, our life hard because of X, fix that. Yeah. Right. And that to us is kind and of the And they're under pressure focus. to operationalize their business. And that's the that's where the growth is kind of like hitting that glass ceiling exactly. right now. Exactly. And so I think it's gone, I think we've done an okay job of getting those people in. I think we need to, to grow that even more. That's where I would I'd say our next area of focus. Alright, so what's next? Give us the roadmap on your next milestones. What are you guys going to knock down next? So our, our next milestone is um, getting the the operation stuff out this summer. Then we want to have a six month cadence on the specs because this, as everybody knows, this world moves at a kind mm -hmm. of an insane pace. And yeah. we, we do want to bring a little bit of order to that. We're not going to slow down the communities, obviously. We, don't, we have no desire to do that. But we want to bring some order for these end users. So we want to be really measured about how often we do those updates. And our goal would be then to have another update in the fall and keep up with how the technology is changing. Is Microsoft involved? Um, they have not been involved They're not today. coming in. What's your take generally, because you've been, you know, as a co-founder of Hortonworks, you've been in the ecosystem from day one. What's the view of the cloud? Because um, the cloud on, and on-prem hybrid cloud, it's a cloud generally an operating model, is, seems to be really a forcing function yes. on accelerating a lot of the big data apps or companies, which are apps at right. the same time. Very data-driven, native data across the board. Right. Um, do you agree? What's your view on that? Can you share some color on your view of what cloud will do for the ecosystem? I think, um, so this is all guesswork, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's we do the Telling the future <laughs> is a dangerous business, but I'll take my crack at all right. it. Um, no, I think cloud is a for forcing function. More and more we're seeing people say, you know, we're just going, either we're going to the cloud first, or we've been told by our CIO that we have to be in the cloud by you know, two years, five years, whatever. So it's definitely a forcing function. I also think it's a real opportunity for, um, for providers like Hortonworks because we can start to, to really simplify things for you, right? Instead of having to say, oh, go buy a bunch of machines, go install all this stuff, go work through all your processes to get all that installed. It can be, hey, we provide you a set of images for a particular application. We, we make sure that works well with the other images. We give you in a, kind of a Lego format like yeah. Arun was talking about today with the containers, right? Yeah. Um, I think that's a real opportunity for us to enable our customers. So to us, it's really exciting. I think it's, it is going to be a good accelerator for the ecosystem. No, so in the, in the panel this morning, did you hear the panel this morning? I did so, not. Okay, but so the, 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 <laughs> the guy you were riding bikes. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, the, but I'll summarize and get your take. So the, 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 the end customers in the panel were essentially saying, public data, public cloud. You know, proprietary data, we're going to do that on-prem. On and, and that's kind of how they broke it down. And, and, and I was struck by that saying, hmm, is that sustainable? Because from a cost standpoint and, and, and just an operations standpoint, it, it, it didn't strike me as the, the long-term strategy. What's your take on that? Well, here's what I've seen. I, anytime, you know, the word move is a four-letter word in data. If you have to move your data back and forth, you're in a bad place, I think. And so if you're going to set it up as, yeah, some works on prem sums in the cloud, and we have to move data back and forth. But I, I think that's what they were saying, word. in I, fairness. I, they were saying basically public data that's in the public cloud, yeah, that's where we're going to run but, that, but then our data is you know, on prem, and so, and they did say, well, we're going to only move the jewels back. You know, yeah, filter, I, move that the jewels, becomes There was the, some moving, and I'm like, no, oh, move it, right? Yeah, data everybody gravity, says right. I'm not going to move it, and then I was, all of a sudden I need to do a join. So, <laughs> right, right. So I, that's but you're working on that speed of light problem, I right hear. <laughs> yeah, next, we, next we got that down, <laughs> yeah, no problem. Changing the laws of physics, always um, a good business model. So that's where I see that kind of bounce up against things. Okay, yeah. More and more, 
we do see people saying they're okay with the security measures in the cloud. And I okay, think that is check. I, I agree. I think that is something that we're going to continue to see push on. I think there are people that are going to conclude that they just can't put their data in the cloud and they're going to end up pulling it back or maybe building their own cloud. Um, or rolling in something like a snowball and stuffing it with data and then shipping it on a truck. I yeah. Mean, is that crazy or? It's not, it's not crazy one time, it's crazy as a standard, I think, right? I don't think you can do that every weekend. That's not going to give you the latency you want, right? Most yeah, of my it's users, be a one-time seeding. Right, most right. of my users complain at me because they can only load their data every five minutes. It, you know, if it's, I can only <laughs> yeah. load it every weekend when the truck stops, <laughs> that's just not going to work, right? Okay, so, so what's the bottom line then? This is a, a hybrid world I, in, in perpetuity? Or are you saying yeah. that I, I think we're seeing more and more public. shifting toward the cloud, but yeah. I don't think we're going to see proprietary go away, right? right? I, I mean, it's, heck, people are still running mainframes. So, I don't think it's going to completely go away. I, I do think the kind of center of gravity will shift a bit. Yeah. Alan, I want to get your take. Uh, final question is, for me is, obviously great success in what this 10 year run has been with Hadoop as a, you know, early idea. Now, Pushy commercializing in real time, a lot of new stuff happening, so good progress, heartbeat solid across the board. Yeah, it's some fragmentation, you gotta, just got to work on cleaning that up. Sure. Are you, um, where, where, do you, where do you hope the ecosystem is in the next one to three years? Where do you hope it, it will get to? And uh, um, where, what point do you want to see hit very fast? I want to see it get to a point where um, people are less focused on the platform where people are more focused on, you know, I want to do analytics, I want to do data science, I want to do um, ingesting of all my data, and I know this is the place to do all those things, and I know I, the, whatever tools I like on there, they all work well together. That's my kind of dream vision, I guess, is that people become Just less works. and less focused on the tech, more and more focused on, the tool, on the, what tools they want to use, and that those tools interoperate. Because I think the real promise of Hadoop isn't that we're bigger or faster or anything, it's really that we can bring that data all together and do the different things. Because you look back in the 80s, we had databases, we had statistical modeling packages, we had all these things, but you had to move the data in between them all, right? Yeah. And so I really think this promise of, hey, I can, I can put it in the data lake or whatever, you yeah. know, Whatever bingo word data you want ocean. to use this. We say ocean. Okay, okay. I hate data, data ocean. Lake. All right, <laughs> I've seen lake, ocean, barn. We hate lake. I hate the word data lake. That's okay. my personal thing. I'm sorry, I won't say it again. <laughs> okay, that's okay. <laughs> on, this, on the cube, I won't say it again. All right, that's okay. Um, <laughs> but you put it all there and you can get to it and you can, you know, your data scientists can run Spark or R or whatever on it. Your, your, yeah. You can run your cubing and reporting solutions yeah. off it through Hive. All that's yeah. just Make there. it an enabling platform so that new yes. people can discover stuff. Yes. And new use cases that will emerge out of good data. Yeah, and isn't whatever is the next big tool, because there'll be a next yeah. big tool that somebody thinks of, yeah. make that work on there too. That's the dream, that's the opportunity. It's certainly within reach. Uh, thanks for sharing your insight. Co-founder of Hortonworks here inside theCUBE, extracting the signal from the noise, giving a little vision, also predicting of the future, connecting the dots. Give me some update on ODPI and among, among other things. Thanks, Alan, for taking the time. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with more after this short break. <laughs>